What's up guys, it's Headsets Modern Warfare here, Gamertab Banter Chicken, and welcome back to another episode of JTAB Tutorials. I guess we're on 32 now, um, losing count, but anyway, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to get, well, how to play uh, PlayStation 1 games and Nintendo 64 games on your JTAG Xbox 360. Now I did do a tutorial on this a long time ago on my channel. I had my old microphone, I had I was on Windows XP and yeah it wasn't uh, it wasn't the best but uh, yeah I decided to make it again um, because I've had a few requests for an updated tutorial on this and I thought it'd be good to be put it as part of the JTAD tutorial series because it is a pretty cool thing you can do. Now I've already done a tutorial on emulators that was episode 7 and that showed you how to you know use SNES emulator and MAME 360 which let you play really old games from like the 1980s to early 2000 kind of arcade games and old Nintendo games like the original Mario and Sonic but this is kind of on a whole another level because PS1 games I mean the the kind of games that are in SNES emulator most of them kind of before my time as a gamer I only started gaming um, when the PS1 came out that was the first console I got was a PlayStation 1 so um, this is uh, this is pretty cool to me that you can play PS1 games and Nintendo 64 games and um, yeah now first of all they don't run in, the reason that I have to make a separate tutorial on this obviously I could you could just watch episode 7 because there are emulators as well it's the same thing well it's not for the Nintendo 64 games for the Nintendo 64 emulator for the PS1 emulator they need to be run through Zell in order for them to to run, not th through an XCX like the SNES 360 emulator runs. Now there is a PS1 emulator that runs through uh, an XCX so that you can run it in Freestyle Dash or XCX Menu uh, with Freeboot, but I don't like that one. I've had loads and loads of problems with it, um, flickering on the screen all the time and just the general quality of the the general visual quality is really degraded and it looks disgusting um, whereas the Zell based version which is the one I'm going to show you looks a lot smoother um, but they both have problems I mean no matter which PS1 emulator you go for for your JTAG or RGH they'll all have unique problems they will. They just. They just will. It's. It's been a long time. I was. I was hoping by now they would come up with one that was. You know that worked. As smooth as an Nintendo 64 one, because the Nintendo 64 one is really smooth. It works flawlessly. But the PlayStation One emulator, the XCX version, and the Zell based version have problems. But um, that's just how it is at the moment. So. Um, the version I'm using for the PS1 is the PCX, PCSXR underscore 0 0.62. There is a newer version, 0 0.92 or 93 or something, 96, can't remember, but it never works for me. I just, I don't know why Zell just refuses to boot, boot, the, boot into the emulator, so this is the most stable version that I've got working is the 0 0.62 so that'll be in the description the Nintendo 64 one will be in the description I may even put the XCX version of the PS1 emulator in the description as well so you can experiment with that one but for this video we're just looking at the Zell based ones because they tend to be smoother um, in terms of games we've got Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time a good old classic which is for the Nintendo 64 emulator and for the PS1 emulator we've got Crash Bandicoot 2 which is a game I used to play as a kid. If you want to download PS1 games or Nintendo 64 games I go to coolrom.co.uk, go to the ROM files, scroll down, find PlayStation if you want PS1. You've got a bunch of PS1 games there, there's the original Crash Bandicoot, I can click on that one. Alternative download link is the one you want to go for, the download now uses a a downloader which is horrible. Wait for the amount of seconds and then it'll give you a button to download it and just download it. It downloads a zip file and the same for Nintendo 64. You got Nintendo 64 games, Ocarina of Time. There you go. So that is where you download um, the actual ROMs from. So yeah let's get straight into it. So what you want to do 
is get yourself a USB stick or an external hard drive that is in FAT32 format. It must be in FAT32 format. Actually, it prob well, yeah, it must be. If, if there's a USB stick, it has to be FAT32 for the Xbox to read it. Um, and for Zell, I think for Zell, it needs. Yeah, you can, I don't think Zell reads NTFS because it's like Linux type thing. But yeah, FAT32, make sure it's FAT32. Um, so let's start off with the PlayStation 1 emulator first. So what you want to do, and please ignore my Avast, it scans everything. Just get rid of that right now. Um, so what we're going to do here is, this is the wrong thing to do. Don't do that. Don't put it in any folders. It cannot be in any folders. It must be in the root of the USB stick. Some people say it maybe doesn't matter, but trust me if you want to make it run as best as it can run you want it you want to do it this way make sure it's in the root so not like that what you want to do is open the folder and extract all of these files in here the readme file obviously is just a text document that's not necessary um, and then for the game which is our crash bandicoot 2 we want the bin file and the cue file in the root of the usb stick as well so put them both in the root and that is it. You're pretty much ready to go once that's transferred over. 183 megabytes for Crash Bandicoot 2. Okay, there we go. So all you've got to do now that it's on your USB stick or external hard drive in the root is plug it into your console. So I'm going to unplug my USB stick and I'm going to plug it into my console and then you want to boot the console with the eject button to boot it straight into Zell. So I'll go over to the console right now and show you what to do from there. All right, guys, so here we are on Zell which is loading up right now. So I've got my USB stick plugged in. All I did was turn on the console with the eject button to boot us into Zell, which is our Linux loader here. And it's just gonna go through and do its usual uh, stuff. When it gets to the bottom, it will search for any executable files. It'll hopefully find the one on the USB stick for the emulator and run it. So it should say it's executing. There we go, it's executing. It opens up another uh, black screen, and which is launching the emulator right now. So. There we go. And that's it, we've got the PS1 emulator running right now. Once you have this screen, it's safe to turn your controller on. So don't try and connect your controller until you're on this screen. Um, it works by using the D-pad on your controller, so don't use, um, you can't use the sticks at the moment. Once you're in a game that obviously is compatible with the, with the um, sticks, then that'll work. But for this menu, you have to use the D-pad. Right, so you can exit to Zell, you can shut down once you're done, you can load game, so I'm going to load game, load Crash, Crash Bandicoot 2, and just give it a few few seconds and it should boot up. Any time now. Let's take a little bit of time. The reason I like this emulator better than the, the XCX version is it's a lot smoother if you just look at the, the textures and everything. I don't know how they've done it, but they've smoothened it out, and it's running in 720p as well, um, which obviously a PS1 game would not run like that normally. But this does cause problems. It means that it, you might find it slows down a bit, so it's almost like you're playing it in slow mo. Not that bad, obviously, but you know it can seem to slow down a bit like this. Whereas the XCX version, it's fast, but it's even worse because it's got flickering all over the screen. There's this weird flickering, and the textures are really bad and grainy. And yeah, so you just, you're gonna have to pick which one you prefer, to be honest. Um, if I still have one I can load from when I was testing this earlier. Yes, I do, do I? Uh, no, I don't. I'll just create a new. I just have to cancel. But, um, yeah, there you go, guys. You can kind of uh, play a PS1 game on your Xbox, which is pretty awesome. Wait for this to do an exit. So, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, I'm able to use the left stick now that I'm in the game, or the D pad, either one, to play the game. And, yeah, we've got the got the game working on your Xbox. If you press the middle button, it will go back to your um, PCSX or Xenon menu. 
um, where you can configure, you know, GPU config, change these settings. I've tried changing this these settings. I haven't really noticed any difference. Um, I haven't changed them all, but there you go. You can load up a new game, or you can just return to the game, and you go right back to the game. So that is it. That is the PlayStation 1 emulator. Uh, if you want to quit, I think you just... Da -da -da, well, turn the console off, I suppose. Um, unless you go to new game. Okay, I can load a new game. Or go back. No, I don't think they've implemented any way of... Uh, Oh wow, okay, we've got some other options in here I haven't seen before. Auto detect region. Yeah, so you could I suppose you can always muck around with the options and the graph the GPU options to try and get the game running smoother if it's running too slow for you. Um but yeah, anyway, that is the PlayStation 1 emulator. Really cool. I love the fact you can actually play a PS1 game on your JTAG. But um now I'll go over and show you the Nintendo 64 emulator, which is by far the smoothest, cleanest running emulator I've seen for the JTAG. Alright, so we're back over onto the computer now. I've got my USB stick open again. So for the... I'll just delete everything that's in here so I can move on to the Nintendo 64 emulator now. So open up uh, Muppin64-360 and when this decides to... to load... ah, there we go. Right, so what you're going to do here is copy all of this. Again, same way we did with the PS1 emulator, it's exactly the same. You just copy all the files over in the root. You can get rid of the text document files, they're not necessary. Um, close that off and open up the zip file containing the game that you want to play. And put that in the root as well. So copying that over. Really, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is only 32 meg. That's surprising. Okay, so that's it. And again, same thing. Unplug USB stick, plug it into your Xbox, start uh, the Xbox with the eject button and boot into Zell, and that's it. Uh, you'll be able to play your, your Nintendo 64 games now. Okay, here we are guys, back on Zell once again for loading the Nintendo 64 emulator. Pretty much the same as last time, just wait for it to launch the emulator after it's done loading all of its stuff. And yeah, this one is a lot smoother. And it should change, it always changes the resolution to 720p, which is another thing I like about these uh, these emulators over the XEX versions, which just flicker and are in 360p or something. So yeah, yeah, it's just changed my resolution now to 720p, and there we go. So turn the controller on once again, once this you're at this screen, and you can launch the game. So start Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and that's it. Simple as that. It just runs so smoothly, I love this emulator. There we go. Start game, file one, create a... Uh, Count. Just freaking awesome how you can play Nintendo 64 games and PS1 games on your Xbox 360 JTAG. So, thank you guys for watching. Go ahead, leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, comment if you have any questions, and once again, I will see you guys next time.